cheaper than our producer's underage sister, edgier than the stuff shown on late night television. Newer than Kim Kardashian's ex, live from Orlando, it's Crazy Train Radio.
That's right, folks. The voice you just heard on that track, it's on the new album of Faith. And this woman needs no introduction to those music fans from the late 80s into the 90s and also the movie and television world. Tuesday night, what's going on? Oh, you know, just trying to uh, promote the record and also uh, getting ready for the conventions that I'm going to. Great, great. Well, first and foremost, why we decided to have you on Crazy Train Radio uh, is your new album, which is exclusive to Facebook, Faith. What can you tell us about Faith? Um, well, it's a compilation of, of music that I've done over about a 20-year period. Um, it's... Um, things that people probably have not heard a lot of new stuff uh that i put on there from different soundtracks and films and just movies uh it's a it's just a kind of a favorite a favorite list um cd you know okay so why did you uh, decide to go only facebook with this album um, well, I just wanted to really give back to the fans because they're just so great on Facebook to me, and I they're really supportive and they're just they're very loyal, and I just wanted to um, give them back something. Okay. Now, would you, as you mentioned, it's a compilation of stuff you've done over a twenty year period. Would you say some of the songs that is on this Faith album are difficult to find? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, it's good that you have it at. Out and it actually for folks who are tuning into this interview with Tuesday, the album actually came out this past Monday on the seventeenth. How's this? this right. How has uh, the reaction been to the album so far? It's been good. It's been really good. Yeah. Okay. How can people get this album if they choose to try to go out and get it? Which we um, urge you to do. They can. They can go to the website, uh, which is www. Um, mp dash e-n-t dot com yeah this is definitely a hands uh hands-on project with everybody involved with tuesday correct <laughs> yeah yeah definitely well you know what uh, uh, we, since we're talking music let's backtrack and we'll get back into faith a little bit you actually yeah not many people realize this you were actually uh backup vocals for quiet riots album mental health correct yes i was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, date, date my, myself for sure, bringing up Quiet Riot, that's for sure. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, we, oh, come on, you're you're only 17, but we won't tell many people. I'm only 17. Yeah. But, I know. It's incredible. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we kid about the 20-year period. She's been singing only 15 years, folks. <laughs> no, yeah. No, but, uh, oh. but you actually, from there, you actually went on to release uh, two new uh, albums, one with CB, or were they both with CBS? The self-titled ad? Yes. What's that? Yes, they have CBS. Okay, the first one being called the you know, self-titled Tuesday Night, and the other one being Here It Comes. Uh, what can you tell uh -huh. us about those uh, actual projects itself? Um, well, um, those are really. I mean, I'm proud of those two. Um, I just uh, didn't. I kind of uh, butted heads with CBS and kind of left. Because um, it was, they were kind of trying to direct me in a, in a direction that I, I wasn't going, and I didn't really want to do that. Um, but um, I had both really good experiences with both records, different producers, and it was it was still I had a great time doing both of them. Now, do you are you actually you know working on any new newer music of your own currently? Um, not right now. I'm going to start doing some. I haven't. I have not yet to begin, but I will. Okay. Well, the interesting thing on the music subject with your career that we I don't know if you still do it or not. The David Bowie tribute band, Space Odyssey, or Space Odyssey. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I don't do that anymore because our scheduling was so off. I couldn't really. I couldn't really do it. But um, but he's amazing. The guy who does it is just David Brighton. Is an absolutely phenomenal. And um, David Bowie actually picked him to be in the commercial with him. Uh, so it's really cool. Um, I loved playing in that band. I loved it. It was great fun. Well, could you actually see yourself uh, doing stuff with them again if your schedule fits? Oh, yeah, definitely. So there is an open door uh, there for you if things happen to fall in the right place then? Yes. Which is great. Well, Absolutely. Well, obviously, you know, uh, 
that's that's a great great sign great great sign but you know what uh if we can i oh, excuse me there <clears throat> wrong pipe with the water here uh actually want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah hate when that happens uh actually want to jump into probably what most people know you your television and film career if we can and uh i guess the biggest uh film and you said you're doing a lot of conventions here is for in the ho- horror genre with a uh, nightmare on elm street correct Right. What? Well, obviously, what kind of conventions you got going on right now? Well, I'm going to be um, in Baltimore at the end of this month, um, the 28th through the 30th. And then I'll be going um, in um, October. I'm going to um, another one in Florida. Um, spooky. Empire. Some, yes. There you go. Yeah. We're, spooky Empire. Yeah. We're down here in, in Orlando. So we're actually looking forward to seeing you down here at uh, Spooky Empire. Oh, cool. Yeah. Are you going to come down? Yeah, we'll, we will definitely be at the uh, venue because we actually last or two weeks ago, excuse me, talked to uh, another uh, female uh, who was going to be at the uh, Spooky Empire, uh, Christina Lee. Uh-huh. Sure. I know her. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So we, we definitely going to be – we're also uh, working on uh, final details to talk with uh, Tyler Main too. So we're, uh-huh. we're oh, de- cool. So we're definitely going to be uh, – have our hands – or our hand in a cookie jar as far as a spooky empire is concerned. So. Oh, good. So then I'll get to meet you. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So for those of us, those of our fans in the Orlando area, that spooky empire is the October 26th through the 28th uh, down mm-hmm. at the down at the Hilton here, which is a going to be a fun weekend for sure. Check. Yeah. Look them up online for I don't have the de- those details in front of me, but I do know it's the 26th through the 28th. Yeah, but uh, obviously Nightmare Four. Yeah, you know, for how how that project come to you as a replacement there? Um, I uh, auditioned for uh, the part and uh, got a call back, and and then Rennie Harlan uh, worked with me, and uh, he got he gave me the role, and um, he basically um, had me uh, cast the other people along with him. Um, they mixed and matched us with uh, with different ones, and um, he, you know, asked me which ones I felt were were strong and which ones I felt comfortable with, and it was really fun. It was it was a very um, it was a freeing experience because being you know replacing Patricia, um, you know, it's always hard to kind of replace somebody, but I tried to make it my own the character and not to, you know, completely emulate her, but, but to have a little bit of her, but, but to really make it my own, my own thing, you know? Well, what kind of, yeah, since you brought that up, replacing uh, Patricia there, uh, what kind of uh, reception did you get? I guess both uh, from the cast, who the returning cast, such as, uh, you know, uh, or excuse me, brain fart there, but the returning cast and uh, from the fans itself. Well, from the fans, I got a really good response. I mean, everybody was really happy with my performance, and uh, a lot of them were like, you know, you're our favorite, and, you know, you're the best Kristen. And, you know, there's always people that love Patricia, people that love me. There's, you know, there's like a, it's, it's you know, half-half, you know. But um, definitely the cast that came back, though, I don't think they were happy to see me. I think they really wanted uh, Patricia back. Now, would you say... Uh... Because obviously you said you do a lot of conventions and all, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of these guys and gals over time. Uh, mm-hmm. ha- has the reception changed uh, in terms of your relationship with them? Um, yeah, a bit. I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely. I mean, we definitely got on later. Um, it was at the beginning when she didn't come back, and so there was a little bit of friction. But you know, I just uh, did my work and. Um, and then finally, later on, you know, we all start talking. But there's there's a few of them that I still feel have a little weird feeling about me. But that that's okay. Everybody has that, you know. And, yeah, you know, it, it's unfortunately those business business decisions behind the scenes. What are you gonna do? That's right. But the other cool thing, which we mentioned in intro this interview with, uh, it, for Nightmare Four, is you recorded Nightmare, the opening credits. Uh, theme music. Uh, how'd you yes. get involved with that? 
Um, well, Rennie told me that um, he needed a song, and I told him, you know, to give me and my partner a chance to write it. And we basically went away for two days and did it and came back and played it uh, for Rennie at New Line. And he loved it. He flipped out over it. And it was so, it was so exciting. Um, he, it, it was it. And it became the title song. <laughs> it was a complete fluke. Hey, things happen for a reason, that's for sure. And you had the music background to help. Yeah. So, you know, but uh, what can you tell us about, you know, let's fast forward a few years here to uh, the new nightmare with Russ Craven. You played yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, how how'd that phone call come about to uh, come in with that project? Uh, they just called me and asked me, told me that Wes wanted me to be in, play myself in his uh his new movie, and um, of course, I didn't get a chance to work with him in the other one, but I said, yeah, of course, I would love to. So, um, yeah, it was a blast. He was He's great. He was really wonderful to work with. Yeah, because we've heard uh, you know, elsewhere that Wes has always uh, spoken highly of your uh, acting work, that's for sure. Yeah, I know that. It's so sweet. I can't believe it. It was just so nice to hear. I couldn't believe it. Now, I guess the last nightmare topic we can talk about here before we move on is, I and I believe your uh, manager was also very involved with it, the Never Sleep Again uh, documentary. Uh, I guess it was just a, uh, they called you up and uh, wanted you involved with this, obviously. Yeah, they wanted me involved with it, but it was too bad. It was bad timing for me because I was doing another movie and I looked so weird. I had dark hair and I looked really strange. It didn't look like me. So I really didn't like that one. <laughs> oh, okay, so you know, we'll move on actually to uh, a little bit of interesting TV and other film projects you worked on. Because you, you said there with Nightmare 4, you uh, had a lot of hands-on with Rennie there. And most people, uh -huh. most people don't realize you actually had a... Uh, or, yeah, I should say most fans don't realize that you actually had earned your uh, acting chops on TV with roles in, like, General Hospital and other projects. So you weren't a complete newcomer when you say you uh, right. were uh, doing things with uh, – helping with decisions and reading actors, and you weren't completely yeah. fine to it. Yeah. No, I wasn't. I, I was – I had already been working on a soap opera, and when you work on those, those are really – I mean, you really learn, you really can learn your chops really good because it's so much work, so many, so much dialogue you have to learn. Um, and of course I did, you know, a, a bunch of other like episodic shows, but, but, um, you know, Nightmare was my first real film. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, most people also go back and seem to love, uh, since you did a lot of, like you said, uh, television work was that series you did in '92, there, 2000 Malibu Road, with some girl. Oh who, yeah. Yeah, some some girl uh, who's done okay herself, Drew Barrymore. <laughs> yes, yeah, that was great fun. That was really fun. I had a blast doing that show. That, and you know what? That yep. must have been an education itself, to, working for Aaron Spelling for sure. Oh yeah, it was great. He was great to me, and uh, Joel Schumacher was wonderful. I mean, it, it was a real. It was a real dream come true because it, it, he he was supposed to bring – Joel was supposed to bring some girls to network, and he only brought me and basically said, this is who I want, period. So it was really great. It was really nice of him, and, and uh, you know, I got the role, and it was it was just a dream. Awesome. But probably uh, uh, two more film questions for you, and we can actually – there's a couple other topics that fans actually asked us to ask you about. First one okay. – yeah, the first one was actually the movie The Fan you did with De Niro and Snipes. Uh -huh. What can you tell us? And it, it, unfortunately, it was only a small role there, you playing at Earth. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, it was really tiny. It got cut. Um, it, there was no time in the movie. But, um, yeah, it was still fun to work with them. And even though I only have one scene, it, you know, it, it, it still was fun. I'm so glad I did it. I it got to meet those guys, and they were really cool. And I got to work with Tony Scott. Okay, so, and can you tell people, uh, for those who may not know, who Tony Scott is? Uh, Tony Scott is the one that just passed away, actually, the one who just jumped off the bridge um, in, in California here, and uh, which is really sad. And um, he's just done so many great movies. Um, it was just it was a pleasure to work with him. Yeah, that's yeah. We hate to bring up a sad topic, though, but yeah. You know, 
the other thing I the other uh, film project I want to bring up here that I got a kick out of seeing the clips out of was you playing yourself in Sex of the City too. Uh huh. That must have been. Were you a fan of the series in the first movie before you got involved with that project? Yes, definitely, definitely. Okay. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh, great. Well, you know what? Let's jump in. Like I just said to you, uh, we actually had some uh, topics uh, brought or questions sent to us through fa- or through our Facebook as well about uh, your career. And actually, oh. a couple of these I got a kick out of. Uh, kick out of I didn't realize about you, especially with the, you doing all the conventions and all recently. Uh-huh. Somebody asks if it's true about your fear of planes. Yes. Yes. Uh, I guess we don't want to elaborate on elaborate on that then. <laughs> well, no, I've, I've just, I just I have a fear of planes. Like I don't like motion sickness, I, so I don't like to I like, don't like the movement of them. But um, once I'm up, I'm I'm okay. Okay. Well. Yeah. Next, our second question it's coming just, from. It's just getting on them. That's hard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we hope you. Well, obviously, we always uh, wish you the best, but we. Uh, we should, we, I'm sure we're going to have plenty of support with you making these travels you got coming up here for sure. Yeah, yeah. Our second question was uh, coming from Facebook was about your relationship and if you still have a relationship with Britney Spears. Um, I don't really have a one with her now. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen, since I've seen her. But um, for a while, we were friends, We and she was a really cool person. She was really neat. Um, but, I mean, you know, if we saw each other, we would be, you know, it would it's be cordial. all good. Yeah, it would be good, yeah. Okay. Uh, next question was uh, from Facebook was, did, you, did your father, which many people may not know, was composer Baker Knight, have any influence with you getting into the music field? Um, you know, he really didn't have any influence. I got into it myself, but he did support me. Um, but um, no, not really. I mean, only influence that he had on me was personally influence on me. I don't think he – he didn't, like, help me with people in the business. Um, that just kind of happened. So it was kind of really interesting. I kind of did it on my on my own, which was kind of interesting, you know. That was kind of nice. Well, do you think your father uh, respected you that much more because you did it on your own? Yeah, I think he did, but I also think he just did anyway. My dad, you know, just really he respected me anyway. He really was proud of me, and, and I, of course, respect him so much. I mean, he's just so such an amazing writer, such an amazing writer. Well, obviously, some of the lists, it's a yeah, you know, amazing. I guess you would say Hall of Fame list of some of the people he's worked with, and such as Dean Martin, oh, yeah. Dean Martin, Elvis Sinatra, Ricky Nelson. For those country fans, yeah. You know, Paul McCartney covered a song of uh, your father's "Lonesome Town." Yes. So, yeah. Did, did, yeah. Did you uh, have any uh, interaction with some of these uh, big stars growing up? Um, yeah, I did when I was younger. There were a lot of people like in my living room. I think I was singing for like Ricky Nelson and singing for Frank Sinatra or whoever. And, and I think, um, that, um, I was definitely, I was definitely doing that. <laughs> and then Paul McCartney sent me a book, which I just treasure. I've just flipped out because he's a Beatle and I'm a Beatle freak. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that must have been cool, let alone. Well, besides sending a book, but to hear your father uh, or h- h- hear Paul do uh, oh, a song of yeah. your father's. Oh, yeah. It was crazy. Oh, it was so crazy. Yeah. It was funny. We actually were – we just covered a concert with uh, Paul's partner too, uh, uh-huh. Denny Lane, who was here in Florida recently doing a show. Awesome show. If you ever get a chance, I don't know if you've ever seen Denny yeah. Lane. But uh, – well, Tuesday, let's – you know, Going to have to wrap this up here, but let's uh, let people know one more time how they can get the Faith album. Okay. Say it again? Uh, can, sorry about that. We had a do, – do we still have you? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, we, lo- we lost you there for a second. But, uh, yeah, we're, as we're wrapping up here, what Faith album, how can people get it if they want to buy it, which we encourage? Uh, uh, they can just go to the website that I gave you earlier. 
okay. um, www.mp-ent.com. Okay, we will also throw a link on all our pages, our Facebook, everything else. We have a link to Tuesday's page. Excuse me there. And uh, uh -huh. yeah, okay. how much? How much is the album cost? I should say for people going out and getting this. Oh, it's twenty. Okay. So are you going to have this at the conventions as well, would you? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. All right, people. Facebook convention. Face, or excuse me, combine the two. Get it on the Facebook, on the website. We will put the link up at the conventions. Come out. If you're in Orlando here, come out and meet Tuesday. Get your copy signed. Definitely a good purchase. Tuesday, thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. Awesome. Good luck with everything. Okay. You too.